One more thing. Let's check out Necrawley the Seattle Zombie Woman. Returning to the state of Washington is always a new adventure for me. I want to share with you the sights and sounds of this beautiful northwest corner of our nation. It was at May 5th, 2021. A disturbance is reported alongside a popular roadway in Seattle, Washington, mm -hmm. drawing heavy police presence to the area. According to witnesses on the scene, Is there like a footage footage? A woman had been spotted limping down the street, wailing in agony, while holding an unknown object in her hand. The woman was acting incredibly erratic and appeared to be seriously injured. Though despite this, oh. it had apparently taken as many as eight police officers to subdue and restrain her. And this was far from the most chilling detail, with that being in the woman's appearance, as onlookers would go on to claim that there was something off about her face. It was unnatural, almost zombie-like. The story began as whispers among the community, with brief mentions being made across the web, though not many would take these posts seriously. As to outsiders, this seemed to be yet another internet hoax, or perhaps baffled. just some kind of extreme overreaction. But in reality, this was a very real scene that played out that evening, and one that was about to be put on display for the whole world to see, as the first video would quickly emerge, <gasps> thrusting this case into an international spotlight and giving birth to an internet mystery known today as the Seattle Zombie Woman. <laughs> Before we dive into this, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a brand new second channel called Crowley TV. Oh. And over there, I'm going to be exploring some mysteries and conspiracy theories in person. Overall, the channel is going to be a lot more fun and way less morbid than this channel over here, while also okay. still exploring some of those dark and creepy themes. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I will leave a link in the description below and make sure you turn those post notifications on if you want to be alerted to my first upload. Thank you guys as always for your support and I will see you over there. Well, that's cool, but I'm not really into conspiracies like that. I want that spooky, spooky shit. <gasps> the first footage. Ah, uh, what that? <laughs> what the fuck? Um. Is that her own self bleeding or is that a body part? She looks a little injured, she's limping. The video Heck. immediately took the world by storm as it showed a woman with a ghostly pale face with half her head shaven as she limps across the street wearing only one shoe. And with each step she takes, she seems to yell in pain before the video quickly cuts. In her hand appears to be the mysterious object which the uploader of the video claimed to be a fanny pack. And disturbingly, mm -hmm. it appeared to be soaked in blood along with many other parts of the woman's body. In terms of context, there wasn't much, as despite the video going viral across the site, information on this individual dubbed the Seattle Zombie Woman was practically non-existent. Wait, so the, wait, so the cops didn't show up? According to the uploader, police had arrived oh. and intervened just after the recording had stopped, in that it had taken a full- Maybe it's like, maybe it could be like a miscarriage? And the lady's crazy and the baby's in there? team of officers to ultimately restrain her and eventually take her away, likely to get some form of treatment. Though they admit that they weren't sure what happened from there, or just as importantly, what had led to this moment. Though interestingly enough, despite the fact that the answers were not emerging, other recordings certainly were. Ooh. On the same day this now infamous TikTok was posted, another clip would be posted to YouTube by a separate user, seemingly showing a different angle of the same event, with this version being significantly longer. I love seeing like real life shit. Oh yeah, she's out of it. Here, we get a better angle of the woman's face, as it appears completely abnormal, with her eyes and lips. Yeah, she looks like a fucking ghost, or she looks like a, literally a skull. And 
is she like is there like quote unquote here, we get a better angle face? of the woman's face, as it appears completely abnormal, with her eyes and lips appearing to be pitch black, which is a dramatic contrast to her pale complexion. All in all, she looks sickly and appears to be acting completely unhinged. Near her, multiple cops are seen attempting to calm her down, though she just continues walking and screaming, mm -hmm. even escaping their grasp at the end of the video, while continuing her erratic behavior. Yeah, maybe she's having like a, a really bad high. From there, it's assumed that the struggle continued before finally coming to an end sometime later, which was showcased in yet another video posted to TikTok. Oh, wow. And it's in this clip where the mystery takes a far darker turn, as we can hear the lady say her first discernible words. The video shows the woman begging the officers not to take her to the hospital, pleading as if her life depended on it. And it only gets stranger and even more tragic as she begins pleading with them not to take her baby. <gasps> This may seem like a random one-off comment oh until God, you does she eat her baby? realize that the object in her hand had seemingly changed. Even though the footage is pretty hard to decipher, it seems as though that bloody fanny pack that she had been holding in the original clip was no longer in her possession. And instead, she appears to be holding something entirely different. Yeah, it kind of looks like it has. This object has been the source of great speculation, as the blurry video makes it hard to definitively oh, yeah. identify. Look, the head right here, and then the the arm. Blurry video makes it hard to definitively identify. Though some, including myself, oh, seem wait, to no, that's a hand. think that it closely resembles wait. a baby, and more specifically the head of a baby. This was the last clip we would receive from the incident, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and overwhelming concern for the woman shown in the clips. Though despite the popularity of this case and all the questions put forth, the answers never came. Bizarrely, no official statement would be made by the Seattle PD, despite their officers being shown in this viral video. And on top of this, despite the story being picked up by a few news stations, no official conclusion or clarification would be brought forward. And given the lack of context and the lack of closure, this internet mystery was born, and the theories would quickly spread like wildfire. Oh, how would it be zombie if... Okay. Right out of the gate, many users would be quick to call this story a fake, believing that this was nothing more than a setup, mainly due to the lack of reporting and also because of the woman's appearance. As given how unnatural she looked, many believe that she was simply wearing a heavy amount of makeup, with some calling her appearance and demeanor almost cartoonish. Plus, if we're being- Yeah, it kinda looks like a... Maybe she was going for that gothic look and then something happened. To be honest, TikTok is completely filled with fabricated stories just like this, leaving many set on this whole situation being fake. However, this actually isn't the case. One of the few updates we've gotten in this case came from the discovery of official police dispatch radio, mm. which was found publicly available on a site known as Broadcastify. There, users would find audio from May 5th in the Seattle area that seemed to depict- And it will be even crazier. <clears throat> footage from the body cams? Ooh. This exact incident, with the audio being just as chilling as the videos themselves. 300816 Avenue West. There's a female walking eastbound on West Barrett Street that has blood running down her face and leg. She's also yelling and limping. She's described as a white female, 20 to 30, 55 to 57, thin build, with a shaved head and brown patches of hair, wearing a gray t-shirt, blue jeans, and one white shoe. 15th and West Armour Street on the uh, west side, just oh, wow. north of. Brandon and I, uh, AMR for 9-1. 
Spooky. The recording seems like an exact match to these videos, from the way the subject is described, all the way to that unmistakable screaming in the background. And this is undoubtedly from the Seattle PD. It came straight from their official police line, meaning that whatever this incident truly was, the police response to it was very real. This note also seems to disprove a long-standing theory that the clips were actually from the set of a movie being filmed in the area, as coincidentally, during this exact time period, there was a major film being produced in Seattle Go called on. Kimmy. On Monday, film crews were spotted in Westlake Center shooting a new HBO movie called Kimmy. Which many had speculated that this was some kind of PR stunt from the project. But given the fact that this was a real police response, and that the film has actually since come out, with there being no mention of any yeah, zombie, there probably would have been like an announcement or something official for like a movie movies, or any similar incidences within it, this is yet another debunked theory. And while on the subject of debunked theories, I want to briefly mention what at one point had actually become the most popular theory surrounding this oh, case, her? which is honestly incredibly offensive. And that is the claim that this woman was Marilyn Stanley, a woman who was brutally attacked by her ex-boyfriend and his dog, leading to devastating injuries. And because of her disfigurement, people pointed to her being the Seattle zombie woman, believing that this footage was taken just moments after her assault. However, despite so many people reporting this, it is incredibly easy to disprove, as oh. the Marilyn Stanley attack took place in Kentucky, not Seattle. And the assault happened all the way back in 2015, a full year before TikTok was even created, and a full six years before this video was filmed. This theory was never a possibility, and one Google search would have shown that, but unfortunately, that didn't stop the speculation. Yeah, I mean, it's it's easy to assume that because of the... I think she her hair was even messed up too. And the outlandish theories continued from there, as some would quickly fall off the oh, deep okay. end, believing that this woman truly was a real-life zombie. The theory is obviously very ridiculous, but it was made a bit more intriguing, as around the same time, there were reportedly similar occurrences emerging throughout the world Florida. of individuals looking and behaving in a oh, similar no. manner. Oh, hell no. India? <laughs> If they run towards the camera, oh no. To make things even more curious, this video soon began being removed and censored from both TikTok and YouTube, with only a few versions being left throughout the web. And adding this with the fact that there was no media coverage following this event and no police statements made to the public, despite the situation's virality, it left many convinced that this was some form of a greater cover-up. But ultimately, it's not hard to tell that this theory was just fear-mongering. And at the end of the day, it's a theory that is highly unrealistic, though interesting to speculate. More logically, it's been theorized that this lady had been in some sort of car accident as she was shown walking alongside a fairly busy no. road and appeared to almost be in shock, with her potentially having lost her baby in the wreck, adding to the trauma of the moment. But it seems completely unrealistic that if a child had passed away, there would have been no reports about it. I mean, surely this would have brought at least local media coverage, and it definitely would have been mentioned in the police blotter, which it wasn't. And given that no mention of a child was made on the official police recording at the scene, this idea, thankfully, has been ruled out, meaning that this object was likely something entirely different. Though even with this, it still leaves the car accident theory as a very real possibility, as it could explain why she was acting this way, along with her apparent injuries. And if that's the case, then what's up with the hair? <laughs> along with this po why isn't she burnt? possible explanation, there was another theory that I initially thought to be the most plausible, with that being that this was all the result of drugs and or severe mental illness, yeah. which yeah. would not only explain her behavior, but also the lack of official reporting. As a woman on drugs causing a scene is nothing all that noteworthy, especially in a major city. And as for her appearance, well, drugs can literally turn oh people into shells of themselves. Oh, the and make that actually scare me. 
make them completely unrecognizable, <laughs> and her ragged and torn clothing could just be the result of potential homelessness, a fate that sadly befalls far too many people in our society who deal with these very struggles. Though with all this being said, landing on one definitive conclusion was unfortunately impossible based off the limited information available. And despite there being plausible theories put forth, a true answer seemed further away than ever, especially as the months began to pass. But even though the situation began to seem hopeless, a break would soon emerge out of nowhere oh? in the form of police body cam footage <gasps> that would- No way way than ever, especially as the months began to pass. But even though the situation began to seem hopeless, a break would soon emerge out of nowhere in the form of police body cam footage that would blow this case wide open. Alright, where's, where's the uncensored version? <laughs> Yo, the, that guy is like so fucking up close to her. Wide open. Oh, I kind of want to see the. Let me see. 2021, 05, 05, 9th, 2022, a YouTube account by the name of Rebecca MS would upload a video revealing her findings into the Seattle zombie woman mystery. As even though the world had seemingly forgotten about this bizarre case, Rebecca had matter. taken it upon herself to find its true conclusion, which led her all the way to the discovery of this footage. Hey, ma'am. Hey, it's okay. You want to tell us what's going on? Yeah, that's definitely a girl coming out. Is that, is that real blood or fake blood? It almost looks like fake blood. <gasps> was there, was there a spy? The video shows the Seattle zombie woman incident from the perspective of the police on scene. And although this further proves that the response to this incident was in fact real, it also proves that the incident itself was not. As the first responders began to quickly realize that this lady wasn't even injured and she was instead wearing heavy theatrical makeup oh, with wow. fake blood, leaving the officers and bystanders just as confused as the rest of us. And the biggest revelation to come of all this was the discovery of this individual's true identity, with her real name being Kimberly Kasai, oh a revelation that would my. in turn lead to the discovery of her social media profiles, okay. and ultimately the truth behind this internet mystery. Not long after the incident occurred, Kimberly would post this picture in full makeup, matching identically to the Seattle zombie woman, along with the caption, I am not your lab rat. Oh my god. Mystery. Is this like one of those fucking protesters, like with art and all that? Not long after the incident occurred, Kimberly would post this picture in full makeup, matching identically to the Seattle zombie woman, along with the caption, I am not your lab rat. She would then make a few other posts on Facebook, which revealed that she had carried out this whole stunt as a way to voice her opinions on certain political topics. This is how I feel about it. Get out! <laughs> Get out! What a fucking waste of time. What the fuck is this? <laughs> 
Oh my god. Which I unfortunately can't go more into here. But in the end, despite the police and paramedic presence being very real, this woman, the Seattle zombie woman, was simply acting. This is truly one of the strangest cases that I've seen in a long time, since its theories were so dark. Strangest? This is the most... <laughs> most useless situation ever. Dark and so disturbing, yet in reality, this was nothing more than a bizarre publicity stunt. And in the end, it's obviously a good thing that none of these theories were- Nick, why are we covering this? True, and that no one was injured as a result making this one of the very few internet mysteries that actually arrived at a definitive and, I guess, somewhat satisfying conclusion. No, it's not satisfying. <laughs> I want to give a huge shout out to my god tier patron members, Alexander Duran, America. Yeah, shout out to them, but what the fuck is this video? <laughs> Dude. I still remember back in 20, so zombie infection scared to run down the way. Uh, yeah, because, like, <clears throat> I know there's like an actual zombie thing in Florida where a guy ate, yeah, this, I think it's this thing. A guy ate, um, <gasps> is this him? Surveillance footage shows the moments after a Miami police officer fatally shoots a naked man after he refused to stop chewing on the face of another naked man. It all happened on a busy downtown highway ramp Saturday afternoon. And while authorities look for more witnesses, one man describes the scene he came across. The guy was like tearing him to pieces with his mouth. So I told him, get off. You know, it's like, and the guy just kept eating, eating the other guy away. And also this fucker, too. The Florida college student accused of killing a couple and then... Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's this guy. This guy was, like, on... I think he was schizophrenic and he was, uh... I think it was weed or something. ...student accused of killing a couple and then chewing on one of the victim's face. I think it was in one of their garages. This is, is conscious. Local station WPEC reports Austin Haroof is awake and responsive. The Martin County Sheriff's Office has not been able to question the teen since the incident. Yummy. Police say they found Haroof ch okay. chewing on the face of John Stevens, who had been beaten and stabbed to death along with his wife Michelle at their home. I don't know how to do this, my son. <gasps> it is this one. Yeah, yeah. I heard this one. Uh, Surveillance. I heard it in the podcast, but is this the victim of the floor? A homeless man whose face was chewed off in a horrifying attack in Miami last year has learned to play guitar as he continues to receive treatment for his injuries. Ronald Popo has spoken publicly for the first time. Yeah, just, just generally thanks for, for contributing and helping out. People in my particular oh, need to be helped out. And I'm sure there's other, other people also that have the same, same type of predicament. I thank, I thank the outpouring of people in the community. I will always be, be grateful for that. Mr. Popo lost his left eye, nose and surrounding skin when oh. a naked man attacked him for no reason. <gasps> it is him? Oh my God, I thought he died. Then. The culprit, 31-year-old yeah, Rudy Eugene... I think this was the first bad assault case that I heard of. ...was shot dead by a Miami police officer at the scene. Following the attack, Damn. Mr. Popo spent almost a month in... Dude, like, Nick, why aren't you covering this? <laughs> why are we covering a fucking... Uh... 